troops arrive, they see that there are children in the car. Oh, it's their fault for bringing their kids to a battle. That's right. Uh, after viewing the video uh, hundreds of times, um, it became almost an obsession to, to, to get the identity of the people there. We knew the identity of, of uh, Lamir Nur and din and, and, uh, and Saeed Sma, the, the Reuters employees. But uh, for me, it was important to establish the identity of the other people there, especially the, 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 the children in the minivan. We decided that it was worthwhile to, to go there and interview them. It turns out that the children survived the attack. Herr Affinson flies to Baghdad in search of more facts. Það gerist hér á þessu horni í Alamir hverfinu í austurhluta af Bagdad 12. júli 2007. He traces the whereabouts of the children and shows the helicopter film to the victim's family. I think we are fairly, could fairly establish fairly well from a journalistic point of view that the, uh, the reason why the uh, minivan was there was basically a coincidence that he, uh, uh, the driver stumbled up on the scene. He was driving his kid, kids to a tutorial. <laughs> On the 5th of April 2010, WikiLeaks publishes the collateral murder film. The impact is no less than extraordinary. Disturbing footage apparently showing civilians being killed by the US military in Iraq. It was leaked from within the defense community to a website. Ja, det var på sajten Wikileaks som den här kontroversiella videon lades ut. Wikileaks har kallats en maktfaktor i det nya medielandskapet. Och vissa menar att det här är... By putting all their resources into the helicopter video, Wikileaks have managed to attract the attention of some of the biggest players in the news business. This is precisely what Assange needs to help him handle the rest of the leaked US material. I had been looking at this release and studying it and understanding how to come up um, with a way to deal with such a tremendously large volume of material uh, that would actually not simply drown uh, any one organization. Assange proceeds to contact the New York Times, The Guardian and Der Spiegel. He manages to persuade the chief editors of these globally respected papers to publish his material in a coordinated fashion, with Assange pulling the strings. What is new is us enforcing cooperation between competitive organizations that would otherwise be rivals uh, to do the best by the story as opposed to simply just doing the best by their own organization. In late July 2010, the Afghanistan reports are published at the same time and day. En av militärhistoriens största informationsläcker väcker starka reaktioner. 
Well, one of the biggest leaks in U.S. military history has exposed several cover-ups over the war in Afghanistan. The real story of this material is that it's war. It's one damn thing after another. The publication of the material is met with praise as well as strong criticism. The Defense Department demands that WikiLeaks return immediately to the U.S. government all versions of documents obtained directly or indirectly from the Department of Defense databases or records. For the first time, WikiLeaks are now facing criticism that they find hard to respond to. The material includes the names of civilian Afghanis, putting them at risk of being targeted by the Taliban. The battlefield consequences of the release of these documents are potentially severe and dangerous. Mr. Assange can say whatever he likes about the greater good he thinks he and his source are doing. But the truth is, they might already have on their hands the blood of some young soldier or that of an Afghan family. Releasing classified material can be very risky. But Assange says that the end justifies the means. We would have had to have released all this material um, without separating out any of it, uh, or release none. The value, the extraordinary value of this historic record to the progress of that war and its, its potential to save lives uh, outweighs the danger uh, to innocence. WikiLeaks now takes steps to avoid making the same mistake again. Their next publication, 400,000 military reports from the Iraq war, are painstakingly edited and names removed. They also start reinforcing their network of experienced journalists. Ian Overton is editor of the independent, London-based Bureau of Investigative Journalism, who are now going to analyze the material and produce their own documentaries. There's a frantic rush of getting the best people we could on board, and we, we drew up a team of 25 people over a weekend and I was my phone went red hot calling people it was um, Saturday night in the uh, middle of August and um, about sort of five or six of us at the bureau met with Julian about an hour later I ended up sort of leaving the place with uh, a USB stick full of 400,000 um, classified military documents the material is essentially an encyclopedia of this war, with reports issued day by day, hour by hour, corpse by corpse. Uh, absolutely unfiltered. These are the reports written by people on the ground straight afterwards. It's kind of the day-to-day the -day war through their eyes. And that's, you know, that's new. We, we haven't been able to do that before, ever, really. The material tells of tens of thousands of civilian casualties, figures that the US have withheld to date, and the widespread practice of torture that the US said they'd put a stop to is still being practiced by their Iraqi allies. I think there are stories that cause you, um, you know, to be filled with grief. Some are incredibly harrowing. I mean, you, you do have children tortured to death or shot in front of parents, and it's not material you can read and not be affected by. When I was reading the reports, you read a young American soldier writing in a very, very bureaucratic, anodyne, sterile way about a father who's driving his children to back home and uh, he's going too fast and they open fire at the, the car and the father fearing that his children will be hit calls all his children to lie on the floor all of the children are killed three children and the way it's written up is it's called an escalation of force you know it's not an escalation of force it's a, it's a killing it's, you know, it's, it's, it's horrific. <laughs>